Today on Warrior Games, I step off of dry land and into a 40-foot war canoe. This time I test my water skills with the warrior crews of the Coast Salish, all in my home territory. And can I get something a little, is this gonna fit a little bigger? Look at me, I'm in a boat. It's a canoe. My name is Steve Sweetholt, and I'm from the Penalica tribe. I graduated high school at 19. I went back to school to become a journalist at 40. And now I tell stories, stories of warriors. Welcome to another exciting episode of Warrior Games. Today we're in Coast Salish territory for the Staminas War Canoe Races. Hundreds of people have gathered here from across the island to showcase their skills in this annual event. I actually grew up fairly close to here and my ancestors back in the day actually used the canoe for transportation and warfare. But I still need a few tips when it comes to taking part in this traditional sport. When summer arrives in Kalit Bay on Vancouver Island, local families get together for the war canoe races. It's a time for athletes to put their skills and strength to the test. Along the shores of the Coast Salish Territory, excited crowds gather to support their parents, sons and daughters. Out on the water, the teams perform their synchronized moves, knowing that working together is the only way to beat the competition. It's an important event for local families, a time for racing against rivals and visiting with friends. As young children play on the beach, old traditions come alive. Water is the center of this life and nothing represents that better than the canoe, a symbol of who they are and who they will always be. I start paddling when I was five years old. I would say six. I think I've been doing it ever since I was seven, so about five or six years. I think for two years. These Staminas kids are pretty young, but don't let that fool you. These seasoned veterans are about to give me a crash course in war canoe racing. Is this the one we're gonna take? No. no. Oh, I don't know if I can lift this. Let me try. It's so heavy. What about this one? It's light? Okay, well, let's try this one then. Okay. There we go. How's that? Are we okay? It's really important for us because it, it's our culture. This is a tradition that's been carried on for years and years. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go pulling. When my husband passed away, it, you know, I inherited everything, but I said, I'm not the canoe paddler. It's all going to my children and my grandchildren. So it's their legacy to carry on. Well, it's part of our culture that's been passed down from our elders. So I'm the third generation now, canoe builders. You got to bring it to life when you're making it. Oh. Sorry. Don't literally drop it. <laughs> <laughs> Jordana and Alexis. Where would somebody like myself sit in this thing, and how well, would I actually get in? Since you're like heavier than both of us, <laughs> um, you might have to sit at the back because you can't have too much weight at the front. Okay, I'm just feeling the boat and how wobbly it is. I'm really concerned that it's gonna hold me. Is it, you have bigger guys that normally go in this boat, right? Mm -hmm. My size? I'm bigger. Oh, <laughs> I don't feel so bad then. Okay, let's try it this way. E. Just keep your knees bent and your feet spread out so your balance it is... It feels very wobbly. Tense up and then relax at the same time. Okay, there we go. Okay, that works. Nice. I actually relax and now I feel somewhat stable. <laughs> I, I know. It's because I'm afraid of going in the water. 
Are you laughing at me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking much more balanced. Those little kids up there okay. are like beating you. <laughs> so let's get a paddle and see uh, see what we can do. Does that mean you have to leave my side? Yeah. I'm waiting for you to let go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm sitting really low here. Jaina, can you show me how to use one of these, please? I agree. Yes, I should hold it right here. Okay, now what? Ah, look at this. So I bring it down to the side, is that right? Okay, then what? The essential wiggle. Yes. Yes? Is there some technique there? You see promise and hope. Okay. Then what else do I do? Oh, okay, gotcha. It's, it's a wonder I can read her mind. It's amazing. Okay, here we go. So like this, like this, like this, like this, right? How's that? Oh, then we switch. Ah, oh, we switch. Okay, let's try that. And then like this, and like this. Am I good? Am I the best? Oh, God. Janie really taught me well. I just can't believe how smooth I am. Jane has showed me the basics on the horse, and now Jessica's gonna show me the basics in the canoe. Are you happy to see me? Be honest. Yeah? Good answer. Oh, okay. Jessica, can you show me how to hold the paddle? Yeah. Uh -huh. It has to be on the top. On the top. Yeah, and your other hand has to be at the bottom. Then we start paddling. Start paddling. Okay, is it just that easy? I just get in the water and away I go? Oh, your your paddle has to be like that and then you push it. Oh, I see. So there's a certain way that I hold it here. Oh, okay. And you lead with your dick. Oh, you lean in. Okay, good. Do you think we can take this canoe out for a burn? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's get the heck out of here. Look at me. I'm in a boat. It's a canoe. <laughs> for me, being in the canoe the first time is very uneasy and very unsteady. This is fun. No look talking. Look how smooth we are. No talking. Can't look around. You can't talk to a friend. It's like I've been part of the team for months. You have to listen to the, you have to listen to the skipper whenever he or she says ready. Ready! One, two. And then you have to say your ones and twos a lot. I don't have sea legs, and uh, it, uh, it was a challenge for me. I'm a large guy, and uh, I'm not very coordinated, so it was a little awkward at times. But I enjoyed it, and that was the key thing, and I tried. Well, I thought initially that they'd be overmatched with my grace, power, and speed. Today, we're in Coast Salish territory, including Penalicut Island, the place where I'm from. In fact, the stairs behind me led to the old residential school I attended many years ago. The school, of course, is long gone, but the Coast Salish traditions they tried to destroy are coming back strong. I really am uncoordinated in terms of how to steer the canoe, and uh, so I, I need to, there's some techniques I need to learn there. This is my favorite one. I'm gonna try to get in this one again. Yeah. Okay, this one's at a pretty important, important role, right? Yes, this is the important role. <sighs> I guess I've put on a few pounds. There we go. So the seat that you're sitting in is the skipper seat. Yes. They're the ones that help steer with the canoe and control in it, making sure that it's going straight. So I can steer actually from here? Yeah. Like... Oh, yeah. And he, they're the ones that call the switch when they're ready to switch. He'll go ready, and then the, the paddlers will go one, two, mm -hmm. and then the paddlers will switch over after they do their second stroke. And then back this way. Yeah. So I'm gonna teach you how to how to slide when we're during a race. Slide? Yeah, you gotta slide. Okay, hold on to that. <laughs> this 
is a little embarrassing. I can't get out of the, the canoe. When you're staying in stroke, you're paddling away. The person that sits in the number 11 seat, they're gonna go ready. When they say ready, you're gonna go one, two, then slide over, then paddle. We get back oh, into a stroll. I see. So just switching sides. Yeah, switching sides. But you don't slide when you're in the back seat. No, nope. mm, the first seat or number eleven, you don't number slide. Number eleven. You probably wouldn't even have to slide right there, too. I think you're right. In my case, you don't slide anywhere. The Rainbow Canoe Club is um, it's family. My grandpa Herman, he started our canoe Rainbow at 1918. That's more than 100 years, and. Uh, I just love the sport. I think my nephews were saying we're up to Rainbow Nine now. It's been passed down from my dad's dad and his dad and just passed down. It's just something that you can cherish the rest of your life. And hopefully my son will take over after I'm done. It gets the kids away from the drug and alcohol and, and getting pulled away from the community. It gets them right back in there again. So it just keeps everybody in one big family of canoe racers. These kids have uh, been training a long time. I mean, they look small, they are young, but some of them have been in the canoes for five, six years already, and they're only 11 years old. Go! Whoa. I found that uh, getting into that small two-man canoe, it was difficult to steer it. Uh, I thought it would be a lot easier, but it wasn't. There are certain ways you have to hold the paddle to cause it to turn in which different directions, but I, I, I couldn't get it. Jessica was getting really frustrated with me. She took it in stride and worked with me, screamed at me, told me what I needed to do. We kind of caught up, but uh, we were a good team. I thought, initially that they'd be overmatched with my grace, power, and speed, but uh, that didn't really turn out the case. I actually lost. Jessica, my young partner, she had an idea uh, that I didn't really know what I was doing, and uh, of course that came true when we're out on the water. Steve. Hard, because he hardly paddles. <laughs> I'm definitely improving over time. Don't you think, girls? Yeah. Well, there's some hope. I'm on this war canoe, and I gotta say, I'm not very comfortable. <laughs> it's very tippy. It's very tippy. And uh, apparently I have to slide over to the other side. After about 25 strokes. After about 25 strokes, but I'm worried about going in. Follow Savannah's paddle there so you could perfect timing with her, stay in timing with her. Okay, dude. Stay, stay relaxed and comfortable and don't grip your paddle too tight or you're <laughs> nervous right now since you're saying the canoe's tippy. Yeah. So just working together as a team. Okay. And you gotta work together as one, that's what they say. We are one. Because if you're switching and slidings off, you'll, like you could tip or list and take a lot of water and it's, no fun. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. When you paddle, you need to do hard work and reach and dig, because if you don't do that, you'll hardly be moving. Dale, how do I get more power in my stroke here? Reach your arm up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah reach your bottom it. arm out. Way to go, Alexis. Is that it? Yeah, your bottom arm, and you got to stand it up here, like you're doing a left cross with your top arm there. Right. So you, you get more power out of your stroke. Yeah. I can feel my shoulder getting a little sore. He likes going out on the canoe a lot, but he said it's tiring because his shoulder. Are you guys getting sore? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right, sorry. <laughs> I'm not letting him switch sides. If we don't switch, um, the canoe will go like out of control. Having trouble keeping rhythm. Uh, uh, you sorry. It was comical because uh, my my late father-in-law would say, <laughs> "Real farmer," the way he was trying to paddle at first. Here, 
is our first switch here. He's got to stay in sync with everybody, otherwise they're going to probably flip. Ready! The beaches of Kalit Bay are calm and peaceful, but out on the water where I'm being put through my paces, it's another story. Here's our first switch here. In the middle of the canoe, where you have to switch sides when you switch paddles over to from the left to the right. So in able to do that, you have to slide in your seat on the canoe from one side to the other. He's got to have the arm positioned in the right way. He's got to stay in sync with everybody. Otherwise, they're going to probably flip. Ready? For some reason, I was really tense and apprehensive about going into the water today. And I think it was because I was fighting the whole time just to keep my balance, and I was just determined to stay out of the water. So it was cold. Oh. I let out a couple of good screams. So, uh, but in the end, you know, it was fine. I did the walk of shame back to the shed and sucked it up. I manned up. Standing by the ocean in Coast Salish territory, you can almost imagine the war canoes approaching more than 200 years ago, the paddles slicing through the water in a powerful rhythm. The warriors gaining speed as they approach to raid a village or go into battle. Today, that fierce spirit can be found in the rivalries between nations in the war canoe races. I'm stepping out into the 11 man war canoe and I'm hoping that with my, my elite training that I'm ready, confident, coordinated, ready to go. <laughs> He's gonna get tired. <laughs> High five. He's gonna get wet. Oh, I am fairly confident. I think I've got my stroke down. I feel the power of the boat as we as we pull away, like it's actually quite quick. I've just wagered two sockeye on our team. Mom, dig them out of the freezer. Ready? Set? Go! We're racing! We're racing! I'm digging in just like I was taught more than 200 plus years ago. My ancestors did this. I'm falling in their footsteps. <sighs> Trying really hard because he's ready. The speed in which that we take off from a from a, a start, you can really feel yourself kind of, you know, being pulled forward because of all the paddles going in at the same time. So it's something I really, really wasn't expecting. You have to be locked in pretty hard to to make sure that you're balanced and safe most of all. But. Uh, and we're moving along at a good speed. And we're pretty neck and neck right now. Yep. Ready! Oh, I get tired. What happens when you get tired? <laughs> you get uh, more training. <laughs> road work. <laughs> more training and road work. Thanks, Dale. Yeah. Oh no, they're pulling ahead. Ready! This work is not for the people who aren't in shape. It's luckily that I actually, I'm not in shape, <laughs> but I'm still giving her my all. Let's go, finish line, just coming up. Stay in rhythm, stay in rhythm. Hey! Piece of cake, Casey. If one of you are not doing your job, then it makes it harder for the others to do theirs. So it was, uh, 
It took me back a little bit too, thinking about my ancestors and how it must have been for them to be using that mode of transportation all the time to get from place to place. It must have been an amazing time. For our people, it was our, our way of life. It's the legacy for my children and grandchildren now. Like going out on a canoe, going for runs, and hanging out with my friends and cousins. I don't really care about winning. I just like going on the canoe. It's fun. I love paddling. I want to paddle for as long as I can because I don't think I could stop. I, I just love the sport too much. I think I was born with it. <laughs> Do you really think he's going to make it to Penalca? He's going a wrong way already. I guess I'm just going to go yay, Steve. Yay, Steve! <laughs> My arms are feeling good. I was thinking, look at those look at pythons. Look at the size of those things. Making sure the competition gets wet. 